Scott French from Soccer America. Uh, for Christian, um, it's a bit of a three-part question. I want to get your thoughts on, one, the opportunity to play with your brother, uh, the oper and what you've seen as he has risen within the Sounders, but then also the opportunity to play with him here and being at home, getting a chance to do it in front of family. Yeah, like you mentioned, it's a great story, first and foremost, being able to come here, uh, be part of our first All-Star game, you know, as, as brothers in our hometown. Um, Estamos, it, it, el equipo, it's el something pueblo. special. Um, es algo especial. Now, in terms of playing with my brother each and every week, it's, it's, uh, it's such an experience. Um, you know, I've seen him grow, and I've seen him put in the work, and at times he's been frustrated, but it's... Uh, in the long long run, it's uh, it's paid off for him, and you know I, I he's going to continue to grow as a player, and 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 he listens and he's a sponge. He absorbs a lot of inf information, so I expect him to do uh, a, a lot of big things going forward. Our next question will be right there in the middle, in the back. Evan Sports Belgium. Uh, question for Christian as well. In Belgium, we don't know the concept of an all-star game. Why is this game so special, and why should an audience from Belgium, for example, watch this game? Yeah, I think uh, an all-star game is, is something new to, to the world, obviously, in, in, the, in the American sport. It's uh, pretty common, uh, but gathering the best of the, of the league and making a team is, is uh, pretty special. It doesn't happen very often, and uh, you know, you want to be part of history at the end of the day. And being, being part of, of this year's All-Star Game, playing against another league's All-Star Game is unheard of. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a special event for, for many players, but also spectators. You know, it's that, that same rivalry between Mexico and U.S. We have a question over here on the side. Uh, Gio Garcia, LA Soccer Hub. I just want to ask Bob. Bob. You see, you've been here from the start with, the, with this team, but also with the league. And now to see Liga MX and the MLS, uh, you know, have an all-star game. What has this meant for the league and how far the MLS has come? Uh, the all-star game has always been uh, a special moment, especially for players that get selected. Um, different formats. And I think, as Christian just said, uh, the idea of putting the best of MLS uh, of MLS against the best of uh, Liga MX uh, is fantastic because it's all about the fans. It's about putting really good players on the field and creating a good atmosphere uh, and letting the fans enjoy it. And so for us, uh, uh, the, the message tomorrow to the players will be very simple. Um, welcome, congratulations, enjoy it while you're here. But let's make sure when we go on the field that we can play really good football and, uh, and create a great night. So uh, I think we're all looking forward to it. Thank you so much. We're going to go right down here with Tom. Uh, Tom Bogart, MLSsoccer.com. Uh, this one's for Bob, you know, as someone who's been around the league for so long. You know, how has the dynamic between MLS and League MX shifted, you know, from uh, the beginning? And what do you see as the key differences between the two leagues? Uh, anything that goes on between Mexico and the U.S. obviously means it's, uh, again, a real rivalry. And for me, um, the, the first real experiences were with the national team. And so those are the kind of games that you remember forever. Um, all the matches, uh, Gold Cups, qualifiers, uh, the atmosphere in the stadium, what it's like when you go to Azteca. Uh, and so... Now, when you start to have more competitions, um, obviously Champions League becomes more and more important, I think, especially because an MLS team has not won yet. A couple of us have made the final, but haven't pulled it off. Um, it continues to be something that uh, inside clubs in the league, everybody now realizes how important that is. And now when you throw in some of the new events, including this year's All-Star Game, it just adds to the rivalry. Um, and I started out by saying that the most important thing in these kind of games is that it produces uh, excitement for the fans. You know, it's got to be fun. It's got to be that great players go on the field and show what they're all about. 
uh, and, and turn it into a really good game with great moments. We're going to go down here in front. Para Lucas, Rodrigo Serrano de Diario As, ¿qué significa para ti esta rivalidad futbolística entre México y Estados Unidos? ¿Qué significa a ti para jugar contra ex compañeros? Ya llevas un buen tiempo en esta liga y la ausencia de Carlos Vela y Javier Hernández para este encuentro. Eh, no, creo que es un partido para disfrutarlo. Eh, en lo personal que he estado mucho tiempo en la Liga MX. Eh, enfrentar a ex compañeros y ex rivales va a ser especial y también para disfrutar con, con jugadores de acá de, de la MLS que creo que hay muy, grandes, muy buenos jugadores y, y bueno compartir en la cancha y, y estos días con ellos también va, va a ser muy lindo así que bueno, tratar de disfrutarlo obviamente algunos grandes jugadores como Carlos Vela, Chicharito que, que no van a estar es, un, es una lástima pero bueno Trataremos de, de hacerlo mejor y disfrutar lo, lo que estamos. We're going to go right here in the middle in the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Chris Bills from the Striker Texas. Um, I'd love to hear from all three of you on this, but because I know you've all got slightly different perspectives and motivations. But when it comes to this game, how much responsibility do you feel to to compete? Um, you know, I know. Um, I guess, Bob, when, when you're picking the team and, you know, putting players in positions and, and things like that, and for the players, you know, playing in this one, um, do you feel a little extra pride, pride wearing the, the league's crust on your, on your chest and putting a good image out to the world of, of this league? I'll start. Go ahead, Bob. You can start. Yeah, uh, yeah there's always a little bit of pressure. Um, The last time I was all-star coach, I think I coached the all-stars against uh, Chivas Guadalajara. And um, when I added players, I knew that the league wanted a good showing and, and that it was important to do well. And so uh, I remember that well. And so, yes, this whole event is fun. Yes, the players come, they get to do a lot of exciting things. But that 90 minutes isn't fun if you don't have the right group of guys on the field, if they're not motivated to show their best and represent the league. So that's going to be a little bit of just making sure that when we train tomorrow, we get that part organized and right. And then when you have great players, you just lay it out there in a simple way and then they'll take over. Uh, Christian, as mentioned, um, has been named captain. Uh, it's really well earned given the season he's had and the season that Seattle has had. So I'll also rely on him a little bit to make sure that that part is right. Um, and, and again, when you have players like this, they all want to show what they're all about. So I think that means that it will be real competition uh, done in the right way. And for me, there's a sense of pride, right? You know, you're, you're representing the, the MLS. Uh, as a whole in, the, in this uh, rivalry almost. Um, you know, you have big name players that, that know how to play those roles. So, um, you know, for us, it's, it's about pride, what we want to showcase the fans, uh, what we want to showcase to the world and, and how, how good, you know, MLS is. So there's a sense of pride there and uh, we have to bring it um, along with, with a bit of intensity and also, you know, being smart as well. For Lucas, we'll have a translation of the question. Lucas, la pregunta fue básicamente, uh, es un amistoso, pero están representando la MLS. Hay cierta presión como una, representando una liga y tener que jugar contra la Liga MX. Uh, si es un poco más que un amistoso, digamos. Eh, sí, creo que vamos a tratar de, de tomarlo con mucha responsabilidad, eh, con seriedad. Sabemos que, que estamos representando, eh, como bien dijiste, a una, una liga. Eh, disfrutarlo también, pero obviamente eh, tratar de, de demostrar eh, cómo está para la liga, lo, los jugadores que hay, tratar de hacerlo mejor eh, y estar a la altura de, del partido y brindar más que nada también un, un buen espectáculo a la gente. 
Thank you. We'll have one more question in the room and then we will be transferring over to our online questions. We're gonna go down here in front, if we could have the microphone. Lucas, ¿cómo estás? Julio Ibáñez de TUDN. Tú ya estuviste en las dos ligas. ¿Qué resaltarías de la Liga MX y qué resaltarías de la MLS? Además, ¿existe la rivalidad en cuanto a ligas? Ya sabemos que en cuanto a selecciones nacionales hay mucha rivalidad entre México y Estados Unidos. Pero como liga, ¿tú sientes que existe rivalidad entre ambas ligas? Eh, bueno, para resaltar, creo que no... Ya no hay mucha diferencia entre una liga y, u otra. Creo que eh, en los últimos años se ha demostrado que, que ambas ligas han crecido mucho, que cuando hay enfrentamientos entre selecciones o, o entre equipos de, de ambas ligas se han estado dando partidos muy, muy difíciles, muy apretados. Esto, eso quiere decir que, que las ligas están eh, en un nivel similar. Eh, y creo que, que yo que, que estuve en, en ambas ligas, obviamente, eh, no, no le veo mucha la diferencia, como te decía recién. Eh, no sé cuál fue la, la, segunda, la segunda pregunta. ¿Qué destacarías de una y qué destacarías de la otra? No, no, y eso solamente. Creo que por ahí eh, la MLS en los últimos años se ha puesto a la altura y, y no creo que hay mucha diferencia, ¿no? Thank you. With that, we are going to transition to our online questions. Our first three questions will go to Jeff Carlisle, followed by Martin Rogers, and then Ariel Judas. So the first one goes to Jeff Carlisle. Jeff, can you hear us okay? Thank you, Lauren. Uh, my question is for Bob. Uh, you alluded to earlier about how you, you were the all-star coach against Chivas uh, Guadalajara. You know, to what extent does going up against uh, the, the Liga MX All-Stars kind of change the dynamic as opposed to just going up against a club team, do you think? Um, no disrespect to Chivas Guadalajara, but I think this team has more talent. Uh, All-Star games are unique in that way. It brings the best of a league. Uh, and so you have so many different talented players. Uh, everybody gets a chance to come on the field and show what they're all about. Uh, the pride for the league the quality of the game, uh, the excitement. So uh, uh, when you look down the Liga MX roster, you see so many really, really top players. Uh, most of us have had some experience going up against these guys, whether it's in Champions League, as I mentioned, or whether it's qualifiers. Uh, so we know that it'll be a, a real test on that side. Thank you so much. Our next question will go to Martin Rogers. Martin? Hi, Bob. How are you doing? Um, there's been quite a bit of talk over the past year or so, including from the FIFA president, of, of closer ties between MLS and Liga MX in the future and maybe even a, a situation down the line where there's a kind of unification. Um, you've been around the league a long time. Is that something that you could foresee happening one day? And if it does at some point in the future, do you think it would be a positive thing? Uh, like you, Martin, I've read about it. I've not been in those discussions, so I can't really say uh, how close it is to happening. I, I do think any time you put top teams together, whether it's in competitions or whether it gets to the point of changing a league, um, you know, there, there's been a lot of that type of discussion this year in football. Uh, the one in Europe um, went back to recognizing the importance of each league. So, uh, as I mentioned, I'm not in those conversations, so I can't say more, but I still believe that uh, the rivalry between the two leagues, the rivalry between U.S. and Mexico, uh, is something that we build on in special ways, and the more good opportunities where players get the chance to go up against each other, the better for the fans. Thank you. Our next question will go to Ariel. Ariel? Thank you, Lauren. Um, una pregunta para Lucas. Lucas, eh, llegaste a MLS justamente desde Liga MX y lo que quería preguntarte era si este partido que se da un par de años después de que vos llegaste a Columbus y, y tuviste mucho suceso con Columbus es una especie de, no de revancha, pero sí de capacidad de mostrar a, al fútbol mexicano qué se puede conseguir acá, qué se puede hacer acá en esta liga y 
quería ver cuáles son tus impresiones o tus ganas de mostrarte otra vez delante del de gran público de México. Eh, no, seguramente va a ser un, un partido especial, eh, porque como dije antes, voy a enfrentar a ex rivales, a ex compañeros y eh, conozco a, a todos los jugadores que vienen desde la Liga MX y, y sí, al haber estado cuatro años allá y, y haber venido hacia aquí hace dos años, creo que, que va a ser lindo volver a, a reencontrarme, especial para mí, trataré de de disfrutarlo y hacerlo mejor ¿no? para, para el equipo, para cuando esté dentro del campo tratar de, de ayudar a mis compañeros, disfrutarlo mucho y, y bueno, ojalá que se, se dé un, un lindo partido, un lindo espectáculo que lo podamos disfrutar eh, todos, tanto dentro de la cancha como fuera también. Thank you. Our next three questions will go to Felipe Maqueda, followed by Jacob Myers, and then Mickey Turner. Felipe? Uh, Coach Bob, uh, thank you for your time. I would like to ask you, how does this tournament help the development of the uh, soccer in the north, north part of the continent? That was for me? Yes, for you, Bob. Uh, I, I think I've answered that question a few times by saying that when you put top players together and create good games, great moments, uh, then you hope that young players are watching and then they have heroes and when they see their heroes on the field playing against other great players then that's motivation uh, you know the, the the best thing of a young player is when he now has a player that he watches and he sees things that that player does um, the way he moves the way he thinks certain skills and then you see young players that, that have somebody to model their game after Um, without that, uh, you know, the game doesn't always go as far as it needs to. So this is, this is one of the most special parts of the game, the, the responsibility of players to go on the field and, and express themselves and show their personality and show what they're all about and use that as an example for all the young players that watch to, uh, to, to see that. Uh, I think every player that's here, uh, if you gave them the chance, would talk about players they watched growing up and how important it was to see the way those players went about things and how they used that as motivation and as an example for themselves. So that is one of the, the most beautiful parts of our game. Thank you. Our next question goes to Jacob Myers. Jacob? Thanks, Lauren. Questions for Lucas. Lucas, how much are you looking forward to this game and maybe refreshing a little bit, finding a bit of joy, and before you return to the club and try to turn things around, maybe just getting a little refresher? Lucas, la pregunta es, ¿cuánto estás como anticipando este partido y si te va a dar un poco de alegría antes que volves a Columbus a continuar tu temporada? Eh, sí, como dije antes, eh, estoy muy contento y feliz de, de ser parte de este equipo, de haber sido elegido para el equipo de, de las estrellas y, y sí, estoy disfrutando de este momento, eh, trataré de, de pasarle bien estos días y disfrutar también del partido, como dije antes y bueno, eh, la verdad que estoy muy contento y sí, es, es un lindo es un lindo reconocimiento para, para uno que, que viene trabajando durante todo el año eh, y seguramente después de este partido ya volveré a, a pensar en, en lo que es el torneo y en el partido que viene con, con Columbus. Thank you. Our next question will go to Mickey Turner in Seattle. Mickey. Thanks. Um, this message is for Christian. Uh, just wanted to know what you are looking forward to most about uh, being on the field uh, at the All-Star Game, and are you lobbying Bob to get all of your teammates on the field at the same time? Well, I don't think that's, uh, that's sec the answer to the second question. I don't, I, that might be tough, but, um, you know, in, in terms of, of, you know, enjoying this and, and, and finding the right moments to, to – 
you know, have fun and also be serious um, is, is something that I'm going to enjoy, you know, getting to know some of the, the, the better players in the league, uh, seeing them each and every week on TV and, and understanding their game and then bringing it to the field is something that I'm going to, to enjoy, you know, seeing their characteristics on TV and then now playing alongside them and, and playing to their strengths is something that, uh, you know, as players uh, we're going to anticipate uh, doing. You know, and, and for me, like I said, this, the, this, the seriousness of being on the field and, and, and wanting to win uh, versus uh, having fun and getting to know these guys is, is something that I'll enjoy the most. Thanks, Christian. Our next three questions will go to Agustin Jimenez, Oscar Gallardo, and Salvador Perez. First up, Agustin. Hola, buen día. Gracias por la oportunidad. Mi pregunta es para Lucas El Arayán. Preguntarte, Lucas, eh, ya comentaste que no ves eh, mucha diferencia entre la Liga MX y la MLS, pero quisiera preguntarte, al llegar a la MLS, un detalle, ya sea dentro del campo de juego, la misma visión, ¿qué detalle notaste en la MLS que quizá en la Liga MX no percibías tanto en cualquier tipo de aspecto, insisto, dentro de la cancha o fuera de ella? ¿Qué fue lo que más te llamó la atención? de la MLS que quizá en México no notaste o no sentiste mucho. Gracias. No, creo que no han, cada, cada liga tiene, tiene sus cosas, ¿no? Obviamente por ahí eh, creo que la MLS también se centra mucho en lo que es el, 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 la parte física del jugador, se centra mucho más en eso. Eh, obviamente también... Eh, cosas de, de organización, eh, la verdad que por ahí en, en México también tiene sus diferencias con el sentido de, eh, eh, siento que es mucho más técnico, se centra más en el, en el buen juego, eh, desde el primero hasta el último equipo, eh, creo que hay algunas cositas que sí, se te, te podría decir, pero como dije antes, eh, el fútbol hoy en día está parejo mundialmente y creo que estas dos ligas al estar tan cerca, al haber tantas competiciones entre ambas, eh, se han eh, mejorado las dos mutuamente y hoy están bastante similares y creo que, que se ha demostrado se, en los últimos partidos que, haya, que ha habido tanto entre selecciones como entre, entre equipos de ambas ligas. Thank you. Our next question goes to Oscar Gallardo. Oscar, your line is open. Thanks, Lauren. Uh, question for Lucas, Lucas Oscar Gallardo de ESPN. ¿Qué equipo va a extrañar más a, vaya, las estrellas eh, que han marcado la diferencia, no? Hoy las bajas de Chicharito y de Carlos Vela por lo que representan, o la baja de André, tu ex compañero en Tigres en la Liga MX. Eh, ¿Quién pierde más? Y preguntarte si vas a extrañar a tus compañeros de la Liga y a tu ex compañero en México. Gracias, Lucas. Eh, sí, creo que es una lástima para todos, no más que nada para el espectáculo, eh, perdernos de, de tales jugadores, estrellas eh, tan grandes como lo son eh, los que mencionaste, André, Carlos, eh, Javier, creo que hubiera sido muy lindo tenerlos, eh, en lo personal me hubiera, me hubiese encantado también volver a, a reencontrarme con André, que es un es un gran compañero, fue un gran compañero, un gran, una gran persona eh, que mantenemos contacto, así que bueno, espero que, que se puedan recuperar pronto, volver a que vuelvan a estar pronto dentro de la cancha, pero bueno, eh, es una lástima que no estén y trataremos de, de, de disfrutarlo igual, eh, como dije antes, eh, lo que estamos y que salga un lindo espectáculo. Thank you. Our next question goes to Salvador Perez. Salvador? Thank you. Uh, my questions are for Bob. Uh, Bob, uh, nice, to, nice to see you again. Salvador Perez from Google.com. Uh, just want to ask you uh, two questions. Uh, first of all, what do you expect uh, with Rodolfo Pizarro in your team? What do you expect uh, having Rodolfo? And the second one, uh, it, the absence of Carlos modifies something of your idea you have for this match. Thank you. 
Uh, the addition of Rodolfo is great for the team. He's a creative player, um, playing really well lately. And so um, his ability to make a clever pass, see, see a window, uh, also um, dangerous with how he can finish. So, uh, again, there's a lot of great players, but I think he only brings more fantastic qualities. Uh, the game will miss Carlos, of, sure, uh, of course, because when Carlos is in these games, his personality, his incredible level of play is always something to be excited about. Um, but as I just mentioned, there's a lot of really good players, and it's too bad it, that you know when you play an all-star game in the middle of a season, then yes, there are times when injuries get in the way of uh, – uh, everybody being on the field. And then the only other thing that obviously becomes a factor on the coaching side tomorrow is how you manage minutes. Um, you know, you mentioned Rodolfo and uh, Lucas and uh, Nani and Galese all play on Friday night. And so the uh, consideration for how to get players on the field in a good way uh, and also how to make sure that they return back to their clubs, ready to continue the season. Thank you. Um, we will take one more question, and then we're going to be prepared for a, for a joint photo op. I have to ask our photographers, please make sure that you're maintaining our distance so we can keep everyone um, abiding by our health and safety protocols. Our last question is going to come from Max Anuto. Max? Did we lose Max? Okay. All right. If we've lost Max, uh, we have one more in the room, and I'm, I'll let Drake ask the final question since we have a lot of one more question. Drake, go ahead. Uh, Drake Hills for the Tennessean. I'm just here to talk about or ask a question about Walker for, for you, Coach, and as well as Christian. Um, Walker Zimmerman, a uh, guy who, aside from um, obviously last year, we did not have an all-star game, but 2019, he was a part of that team. Obviously, Coach, you know about that. Um, I'm curious to know from, from both of you guys' perspectives when it comes to Walker, have you seen anything, uh, maybe some growth? Is he the same type of guy, the same type of player when you watch him this season as opposed to 2019? Um, and also for you, Christian, I mean, when you take a look at Walker on and off the field, uh, what makes him you know, stand out to be a part of you know, the all-star team if it wasn't for 2020, perhaps you know, three times in a row? Thank you. Uh, I think anybody who knows Walker uh, recognizes his motivation to continue to improve uh, on the field and, and also as a leader. And so uh, I think some of the challenges that we threw at him at LAFC uh, in a new team were important. And then uh, I've seen that continue to grow since he's been in Nashville. And obviously, he's been a huge part of the, the success there. Yeah, and I think uh, for me specifically, uh, over the past couple of years, you know, I've seen him grow, uh, you know, with, with his, his confidence, his leadership, uh, his ability to play on the ball. Um, you know, he's, he's a big presence on and off the field. You, you feel when he's on, he'll win every header. Uh, you know, he communicates extremely well. And then off the field, you know, he's goofy, brings a team together. Uh, and then, you know, with, with him having a baby, you see that maturity come, come through and, um, you know, happy for him and all that he's accomplished. Um, but like, like Bob said, he's going to continue to grow because that's, that's his personality and that's his motivation.